Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 18th of June. Indian PM Modi launches crash course program to train COVID-19 frontline workers. Pakistan's opposition leader slams government in parliament, says budget is fake. And terror groups could pose threat to US from Afghanistan in two years, say Pentagon leaders. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday launched six crash course programs to train and upskill around 100,000 frontline workers across the country to help fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Speaking on occasion, PM Modi urged people to remain cautious, stressing that the virus is still amongst us and the possibility of it mutating is also there. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday launched a customized crash course program for COVID-19 frontline workers, which aimed to skill and upskill over 100,000 COVID warriors across the country. The training will be imparted to COVID warriors in six customized rules, home care support, basic care support, advanced care support, emergency care support, sample collection support and medical equipment support. Speaking at the occasion, Prime Minister Modi urged people to remain cautious, stressing that the virus is still amongst us and possibility of it mutating is also there. This virus is still in our midst and until it mutated, there is also a chance of mutating. That's why every illness हर सावधानी के साथ साथ आने वाली चुनौतियों से निपटने के लिए हमें देश की तैयारियों को और ज्यादा बढ़ाना होगा। He also said the government is committed to providing free COVID vaccination for everyone starting June 21. The program comes at a time when the medical experts have warned that the third wave of coronavirus infections is likely to hit India by October. Meanwhile, India on Friday reported 62,480 new COVID-19 infections over the past 24 hours, taking the total COVID-19 tally to 29.76 million, and that's to 383,490. With Sri Lanka deciding to proceed with the China-backed Colombo Port City project, India on Thursday said that it is closely following the development. India's foreign ministry spokesperson in a weekly press briefing said that India hopes that Sri Lanka remains mindful of bilateral ties and security in the maritime domain. Amid criticism from opposition parties, the Sri Lankan government unveiled a contentious draft law last month which will establish a Colombo port city special economic zone and commission under a $1.4 billion deal funded by China. There have been concerns about China seeking to increase its footprint in the island nation through infrastructure projects. This comes at a time when Sri Lanka's tax revenues have plunged, raising concerns over debt and credit downgrades. We have also noted the concerns that have been raised in Sri Lanka regarding several aspects of the framework for the Colombo Port City project. We expect Sri Lanka will remain mindful of our excellent bilateral cooperation including for mutual security in our shared environment, which includes the maritime domain. In news from Pakistan, leader of the opposition in National Assembly, Shehbaz Sharif, on Thursday, lashed out at Prime Minister Imran Khan-led government for failing to fulfill its promises of reducing poverty and creating millions of jobs. He said it had ruined the country due to a storm of inflation and termed the annual budget as fake. Leader of the opposition in Pakistan's National Assembly, Shahbaz Sharif, on Thursday slammed 
PM Imran Khan led PTI government saying the annual budget was fake as the pockets of the poor people were empty and they were not able to feed their families. Finally initiating the budget debate after three days of ruckus in the lower house of the parliament, Shahbaz Sharif, the president of Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz Party, blamed the government for inflation, poverty, unemployment and increasing power outages. He also called for reviewing the budget proposals about taxes and duties to ensure maximum relief to the people. Agar ghurbat mein kami nahi karega, agar awam ko rozgar mohya nahi hoga, mengai kam nahi hogi, to ye budget nahi, ye sara sar dhoka aur kaum ke saath fraud hai, jiske hum barpur mazamat karte hain aur usko hum expose karenge. The Pakistan government has proposed Rs 8,487 billion budget for the next financial year with a fiscal deficit target at 6.3% of gross domestic product. The budget unveiled on June 11 comes at a time the cash-strapped country is facing an economic crisis aggravated due to the coronavirus pandemic. More on news from Pakistan. Locals in Pakistan's largest city, Karachi, continue to face problems due to prolonged power outages stretching up to 12 hours almost every day. President of Jamaat -e Islami Party's Karachi chapter held a press conference recently and blamed the government for negligence in addressing the issue. Locals in Pakistan's Karachi city continue to be upset over the heavy load shedding faced by them for up to 12 hours almost every day. President of Jamaat -e Islami Party's Karachi chapter during a press conference spoke on length about how the citizens are facing serious problems due to power outages amid the ongoing hot weather. He lamented the government's negligence in addressing the issue and blamed a nexus between the government authorities and the K Electric Company, which supplies electricity in Karachi. Jo bijli ka masla hai, और उसकी लोड शेडिंग का मामला है हर गुजरते दिन के साथ बदतरीन होता चला जा रहा है और अफसोस की बात यह है कि इस पर हुकूमत की तरफ से कोई भी ऐसा इकदाम नहीं किया जा रहा जिससे कराची के शहरियों को कोई रिलीफ मिल सके अ मैसिव प्रोटेस्ट वाज आल्सो हेल्ड बाय लोकल्स अगेंस्ट फ्रीक्वेंट लोड शेडिंग एंड वाटर शॉर्टेज इन कराची रिसेंटली द प्रोटेस्टर्स ब्लेम दे रिसीव हेफ्टी इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बिल्स डिस्पाइट रेगुलर पावर आउटेजेस in news from Afghanistan, a United Nations report in January said there were Al-Qaeda fighters in Afghanistan and that the Taliban maintained a close relationship with the extremist group. During a congressional hearing on Thursday, top U.S. military leaders said that international militant groups like Al-Qaeda could pose a threat from Afghanistan to the U.S. homeland and American allies in two years. Top U.S. military leaders said on Thursday that international militant groups like Al-Qaeda could pose a threat from Afghanistan to the U.S. homeland and American allies in two years. U.S. President Joe Biden's decision to withdraw troops completely from Afghanistan by September has raised concerns that the country could erupt in full-scale civil war, providing Al-Qaeda space in which to rebuild and plan new attacks on U.S. and other targets. I would assess it as medium. I would also say, Senator, that, uh, that uh, it would take uh, possibly uh, two years for them to develop that capability. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, said he agreed with the timeline and there was a medium risk at the moment. I concur with that and I think that uh, if certain other things happen, if there was a collapse of the government or a, a dissolution of the Afghan security forces, that risk would obviously increase. But Right okay. now, I'd say medium and in about two years or so. The comments are some of the clearest signs of concern in the military and intelligence community about the threat militant groups could pose from Afghanistan and the risk of a complete withdrawal. A United Nations report in January said there were as many as 500 Al-Qaeda fighters in Afghanistan and that the Taliban maintained a close relationship with the Islamist extremist group. The Taliban denies Al-Qaeda has a presence in Afghanistan. The United States has completed more than half of its military withdrawal from Afghanistan, which is expected to be finished well before September, nearly 20 years after Al-Qaeda's attacks on the United States triggered the war. 
More on news from Afghanistan. The Amnesty International has asked the Afghan authorities to investigate the killings of the Afghan civilians and bring to justice the perpetrators of the brutal killings that have taken at least 24 civilian lives in over a week. Amnesty International cited the June 15 attack in which five health workers were killed and four others were injured after gunmen opened fire at various polio vaccination centres across the city of Jalalabad in Nangarhar province, which caused the vaccination drive to be suspended. The incident comes shortly after two car bombs killed at least seven civilians and injured at least six others in a district of west part of Kabul on June 12. On June 8, 10 mine clearers working for the international humanitarian organization, the Hello Trust, in Baglan province were killed in an attack that injured 16 others. Health workers, humanitarians, human rights defenders and journalists have been particularly targeted in a wave of assassinations since the start of peace talks in Doha last year, the report said. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. As the second wave of the coronavirus rages, the Rohingya refugees living in the world's largest refugee settlement in Bangladesh have urged the international community to provide them vaccines. There have been over 1,450 confirmed COVID-19 cases among the Rohingya refugees. As the risk of COVID-19 infections and fatalities continue to run high, Rohingya refugees in the South Asian nation of Bangladesh have called for coronavirus vaccines to be arranged for them at the earliest. Vaccines are yet to reach these people and local authorities have been left to rely solely on strict lockdown measures to prevent rising infections. Meanwhile, people were seen getting swab tests at a field hospital earlier this week. There have been 1,452 confirmed COVID-19 cases among Rohingya refugees and displaced Myanmar nationals in Cox's Bazar, amongst the total cases of 841,087 in Bangladesh. <laughs> Nearly 1 million Rohingya are living in camps in the border district of Cox's Bazar since fleeing a military crackdown in Myanmar's Rakhine state nearly four years ago. The Bangladesh government has also sought COVID-19 vaccines for Rohingya refugees from the United Nations and other donor agencies. Bangladesh's vaccination drive suffered a blow after India, the world's biggest vaccine maker, curbed exports to meet surging demand. Authorities in India's Jammu and Kashmir felicitated Kashmiri youths on Thursday who summited the Mount Everest earlier this month. The team faced two back-to-back -back storms during their summit but finally managed to summit the world's highest mountain, braving all odds. Authorities in India's Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir felicitated Kashmiri youths on Thursday who summited the Mount Everest earlier this month against challenging weather odds. The expedition was a joint effort of Srinagar-based Jawahar Institute of Mountaineering and Winter Sports, Uttarakhand's Nehru Institute of Mountaineering and the Indian Army. The Kashmiri men who scaled the world's highest mountain belong to a humble background. It was for the first time in India that two national mountaineering institutes collaborated for such an expedition. This time, when the weather was bad, our team continuously from 21st till 2nd June, for 10 days, was on that altitude. So, because of the altitude, naturally, the body starts to get weakness. But the team was tough-minded, tough core. तो हम वहाँ डटे रहे क्योंकि हमने अपने स्टेट का नाम ऊंचा करना था अपनी कंट्री का नाम ऊंचा कर। The team faced two back-to-back -back storms during their summit in late May because of two cyclones on the Indian mainland. The team finally managed to summit the Everest on June 1 against all odds as many teams returned to base camp waiting for the weather to clear. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. 
now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com you can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on twitter at sasianewsline that's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time next week have a great weekend good night subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button